You are listening to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. On this episode, my guest is David McWayne from the band Big D and the Kids Table, and the song is, you guessed it, Ska Sucks. Big D and the Kids Table included a fantastic rendition of Ska Sucks on their 2019 covers album, Strictly Covered, which also features covers of work by Hepcat, Morphine, Operation Ivy, The Beastie Boys, and more. I really enjoy Big D's version because of their inclusion in a lo- of a long passage of The Specials, a message to you, Rudy, in the middle of the song. Ska Sucks is track three on Big D and the Kids Table's covers record, and in this episode, David McWayne joins me fresh off a fall 2022 Big D tour to discuss his love of propaganda, Big D's years-long friendship with Sue Lynn Hago, their cover of Ska Sucks, The Specials, and more. You can find Strictly Covered at Big D and the Kids Table official.bandcamp.com or wherever you check out music. So please enjoy my conversation with David McWayne and Big D and the Kids Table performing their cover of Ska Sucks. David McWayne, welcome to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. Well, thank you for having me. I think this is a really cool podcast because the band rules. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, David, why don't you go ahead and spend a moment and introduce yourself to the audience out there? Because I'm sure a lot of people know who you are, but I'm sure that there are some who are just, you know, in being introduced to you for the first time. Yeah. Okay. So I... Um... I started school in Boston around 1995 and literally the first group of like kids I started talking to were then later big D in the kids table, you know, nice. we were just like, you know, musicians at a music school, Berkeley, and um, just kind of did that whole thing of like, I play drums. I so like that was my principal instrument. And then, you know, Mark would be like, Oh, I can play guitar. And Steve was like bass. And we got together to just first strictly jam operation Ivy songs. Um, just Cause you know, and we, ne- I'd never met friends who would want to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were, us three were really into it. 
And then slowly we started saying, well, why don't we start a band? And each member of the band literally was just another one of our friends. And the yeah. reason why we have horns was because when we would go jam, they wouldn't have anything to do. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So we just add, it was just one of those like, why don't we all play together? You know, um, you know, because, you know, you just wanted to we were addicted musicians. Um, we had limited parties we were invited to. Um, yeah. You know, like, so we just played all the time and we weren't we weren't like doing one of those like we're going to start a band and we're going to go tackle the world. Literally, it was just, hey, that's a cool riff. Hey, what, what about this? <laughs> yeah, like it was just playing, it was playing like it was as if we were in a sandbox or something. Um, and then one day a band uh dropped off a uh, a broke show um broke uh, is an old band um and somebody asked us to open the show and we thought that was really funny uh because we weren't we didn't <laughs> consider ourselves a real band and then they said i had to sing rather than play drums because we didn't have a singer and then 26 years later we're big d in the kids table are you like a good drummer? Are you like a reading music kind of like very trained, specifically a drummer? I would say I'm a phenomenal drummer. Nice. <laughs> um, but that's because I chose and, and it's kind of like I can I can take this to singing later, but I chose just not to listen um, or mainline all the things that all the drummers were doing. Like yeah. all the drummers would listen to the same drummers. And I noticed they would generally play the same way and um, with fills and style. So I really just kind of like said, no, I'm not going to listen to Stuart Copeland. I'm not going to listen to all these things. Like you hear it, you hear it, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to study it. And I just studied other things like trip hop drummers, DJ Crush, the Diggable Planets, Portis. They try to make these DJ, try to put them on the kit, even though they're all synthetic sounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so... You know, I'm a more I'm 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 that, and I'm also like a very behemoth drum drummer, like just really hitting them. Um, and so, yeah, I love like I love drums so much. They're they're a huge piece of me. And the band I played in was Drexel, mm -hmm. and um, those guys are just awesome. And uh, and they've gone on to do other things. Aaron Sinclair, um, A Sinclair, I think he goes by now. But yeah, they just told me to play to sing, and then. It's just a fluke. It's just random. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Well, my first exposure to your band was, I believe, 2005. You were opening a Toasters tour, and I saw you play in Columbia, Missouri at a tiny little bar on the main street in Columbia, Missouri, right by the university campus. Yeah. And I went to this Toasters show, and you guys played, and... I was like not as excited about the toast because I wanted to see like fast punk bands. So like the fact that you guys were the ones who opened up, like I was like, okay, this is awesome. So like you, you won me over right away. Like in, it was like 2005 was the first yeah. time I heard your bands, so like 10 years in, you know, it took me a long time to get there. Well, I remember that tour well, because you know, the first time you really meet bucket and the rest of the guys, you know, it stands out, you know, like yeah. he taught me a lot of things like about like publishing and, you know, like that tour he's really good about taking you under his wing and going like do you know all these things and you're like i don't he's like all right well hear me out real quick you know so that was a big deal tour for us yeah yeah, yeah. well and that was a big deal for me too because a bunch of my friends in high school were super into the toasters and i never really got it and right. then i saw that show so i was super pumped about you guys so i was in an amazing mood because you guys crushed it and then they came out and i was like oh I really get it now. This is really special. So yeah. it was a perfect, one of my most perfect college shows that I, that stands out in my memory is Big D and the Toasters in Columbia, yeah. Missouri. So I'm delighted to be able to tell you that. Um, yeah. So as a, as a drummer, I would imagine that you may have some intriguing thoughts and ideas on George from Propagandi then too, I would imagine, because he, to me, is kind of a special standout figure. And I feel like I'd be missing an opportunity if I didn't bring that up to you. Yeah, I, I can... I can almost go through almost everybody. Um, but like you're saying, like we start with drums. So yeah, I, uh, excuse me. So in high school, you know, I listened to basically, you know, metal and hardcore, you know, you're from Boston. You're probably going to know a lot about Boston hardcore, New York hardcore. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, we, we also you have to remember that uh, the, the back in those days, the Mighty Mighty Bostons would play with Slapshot, like the ska scene and the, the hardcore scene in Boston were the same scene. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so yeah, so, um, and then I would listen to like 
you know, early rap because, you know, you know, like I, I love the Curtis Blow and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And so at that point, I already was a, fa- a fast playing drummer because of Master of Puppets and early Metallica and what have you. Uh, but then it was interesting, like I didn't really know anything about uh, the punk sound, like the fat record sound. Sure. You know what I mean, like nobody around me, nobody around me was doing that no, or playing it at all. Um, mm-hmm. The only like introduction to, you know, ska and punk was Operation Ivy and the Boston's. And I think you could pretty much say that was pretty much it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so by me liking those two bands, suddenly Aaron from Drexel that I was telling you about, he goes, check out Propagandi. And I'm, as they put it, I'm not really a shepherd, as they say with music, like some friends are the shepherds and they sure. go, check out Propagandi, check out this. Um, I have kind of like a quiet taste. Like I don't, I, I'll go and get things and listen to them, but I'm not like showcasing them to friends and stuff. So I was always like a follower or, or, or just someone that would, you know, be told, you know, so Aaron would be like, check out Propagandi. And of course, right away, I was like, oh, there's this style of music that's still doing the fast um, kind of thrash metal that I like, um, but it's a different, it's a different genre. And so yeah. that started going, oh my God, Propagandi. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, we played, we played them just religiously. Yeah. Well, and interestingly, since you're coming from thrash metal, so does Propagandi. Like Chris and Jord yeah. are, yeah. you know, yeah. notorious childhood metal heads. And mm-hmm. so they were coming from exactly the scene that, that like that you're describing, you know? Yeah. And I think that that really comes across a lot in, in the way that they performed in those early records. Cause they just sound a little different. You know what I mean? They're a little yeah. different than a lot of the other bands from that time period. Well, I'll just, I'll jump and say uh, one of the big things that inspired me. So, so drum wise. Yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, I mean, like even in that song, Scott sucks the way he starts the, I mean, it's just so cool. And if you go and listen to, early Drexel stuff, you can, you can hear that. I was like, hell yes, I'm going to, I'm going to take that kind of oozy drums and go for it. Kind of like a Wilhelm scream. Oh yeah. We were kind of bands at the same time. Um, And me and Nick were, you know, we would, the drummer, we would have lots of conversations about the style that we're talking about. And we would kind of like watch each other get better. You know what I mean? Yeah. When they were smacking Isaiah, I'd imagine too, right? That's right. Yeah. And so, so definitely drums, but what was great about the guitars was um you know it, that really did their guitar playing was something i put in my back pocket for some big d writing because i'm a huge fan of the double picking like dun 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 you know that stuff i just love it i think it's so cool yeah. and and they do it so well yeah. um, and so like you're saying i can hear the thrash metal in them with that but then even when they do like the volumes uh, swells like when you know you hit a chord with the volume off and then you bring the volume up yeah yeah i mean that was i was like my god this is like master of puppets but different like so like everything they were doing was fresh for my ears but also like the love was already deep rooted and then you know like when i went to write the song that uh lax from big d and the kids table yeah like you can like i can, I can with us talking i was like yeah well i i think you know it was the listening of propaganda at the time th- that helped shape that framework. You know what yeah. I mean? I never, really, I never really thought about it, but even the double picking, like, my style of fast punk songs, when I write them on guitar, I think are coming f- from that time of, of loving their style. And I, and I don't mean, I don't think you can go, Oh, like no effects. And Oh, like the suicide machines. And Oh, and you can go down the, the rabbit hole. I'm like, no, 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 no. Specifically. Propagandi, you know what I mean? Like they had, I I know people can think it's all the same, but it's it's not really all the same. So as a person who appreciates heavy music, I feel like you maybe have some interesting thoughts on their progression as a band. Like maybe they, I don't know. Cause a a lot of people have been like, yeah, I only listened to the first two records and on the show. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But I'm wondering of how your progression as a fan has gone with them, especially considering the fact that you come from other genres of music as your like home, kind of like home base interest. Well, I do have to admit some, some bad things. And that's, I (laughs) I was never the guy who like bought records either. Like finance, I I was never the guy that could, the idea of this buying $20, you know, that was just beyond me. Like I was always the guy that, would have everything on blank cassettes or blank CDRs. Um, but like, so 
when my group of friends um, that would always play propaganda when kind of when we all went in different directions, I, I didn't I didn't keep up on it. Do you know oh, what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, and so I do know th- I do know things, and I go, oh, is this a new propaganda? And I and I and I like it, but um, I have to admit, like, and but after this interview, of course, I'm going to go right back because now you got me all jazzed back up about it. Nice. Um, but one, but one thing I'll say is that it was a huge deal that our good, good, good friend, early big D friend Susu, started playing with them. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, was, yes. Susu was, was the a band. Huge deal for us. She was like our Florida best friend, uh, person who came to our shows in Florida, and then when she she got the job with them, we were like, "What? One no way! Friends? Seriously? I have a friend?" In propaganda is ridiculous. You know? This is amazing. This is an amazing little historical moment here that I didn't even know. That is so cool. So yeah. You, so you go way back with Sue Lin then. Fantastic. Way back. And one of the biggest things is that you don't get you don't get this all the time in life. Is we always knew she was a badass. Of you know course. I mean? She was our badass Florida friend. And for other people to recognize it. And her get a spot in like one of the, you know, one of the best fucking bands, you know, like it was just so great. I mean, it was just, it was what it's made of and you don't always get to see stuff like that, you know? So, Amazing. So, you know, um, but, but it's also one of those things where um, it's, it's, it's weird how the scenes get. And even though Big D is in the punk and ska scene, we are so far from the fat wreck scene. Like, right. Like we don't, we don't know anybody. I mean, you know, yeah. you know I mean? like we, you know, I've palled around with bad cop, bad cop a couple of times, but it's like, I think that's their Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, sometimes it's not other people, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen propaganda live or cross paths with them or any way? No, like, no. And, and they're, it, they're oh, elusive. Uh, you know, how so? Well, yeah, like, you know, in all those years, like the late 90s, like I'm from St. Louis. So from finding them in like 1996 until 2007, they were like my favorite band, but I was I never got to see them live because, yeah. like, you know, they had a show. They had a tour scheduled around today's Empire's Tomorrow's Ashes and then 9-11 happened and they like left the country. So yeah. there's a lot of years on the on where they were not very active at all which were formative years for so many of us wanting (laughs) desperately to see them live, but just not having the opportunity to do so. Um, So, you know, you saying you've never seen them before is extremely common for people on this podcast. It's, it happens all the time. Yeah. I I think, I mean, not to reiterate, but Melancholin and Propagandi, these were like huge big deal bands um, for us and, you know, shaping and formative, like you said, but yeah, you're, but, but then it, they never, I never could see them or anything. Right. You, know, you have, but, you have to like live in a certain place. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it's confusing. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about big D and the kids table a little bit. Um, so on this show, I love featuring artists and musicians and bands that cover propaganda's music. And I'm always on the lookout for who is doing what. And I found Big D's cover of Ska Sucks. It's been ages ago. Um, but I'm wondering, um, tell me a little bit about the the lore of yeah. of the song "Ska Sucks" in general. As somebody who's kind of in and around the ska scene yourself, I'm wondering if you can talk to me about like what this song means as far as like something that's like a part of the scene, um, and just kind of like what it means to you as just a piece of work itself. Well, I, the song was not only a like a big deal song for me, but also like had me kind of like learn as far as like humor, you know, I'm young humor and snarkiness um, and kind of where I was at. So where I was at, um, at that time, like I said, I liked um, Operation Ivy and I liked the Boss Stones. And then when I like these bands that I'm, that I'm about to say now, but I'm just saying at the time, a little disclosure at mm-hmm. the time, um, real big fish and less than Jake were crossing my paths in, in no doubt. And I call it the color, you know, the, the sure. color bands. I was like, Whoa, 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 what's going on. And I'm, I'm just starting to get into the specials and, and like everything about being like cool, like, 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 ah, you can't use the word cool. Cause then it's not cool. But like just boys <laughs> of these bands 
I really, I really liked their poise. And then suddenly this new wave came in and it was the total opposite poise, right? So I loved that propaganda was saying, you know, Scar Revival isn't cool, you stupid fuck. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I was just very with him. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I know. Uh, you know, I, I like the idea of ska always being a genre that's in the underground music scene, you know? And, and so I also, when I started singing, I, I really, really liked his voice. Like, um, his attitude, his lyrics, just the sound of it. I was like, oh, it was one of those, oh, I did... I didn't know you could do this because he's a one of a kind voice, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and his lyrics, one of a kind. And, and so vocally, I was very like, this is my guy, you know, like I, I could identify with him because I don't like, I'm a drummer. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying it's bad. It, I describe it like I don't get mushrooms on my pizza, but that doesn't mean I'm against people who likes mushrooms on their pizza. But like, I don't like sing songy bands too much. Like, you know, like I like Tom Petty, but I, but like, I don't, right. that is just, it's not made for me. It's not, I don't gravitate to it at all. I'm like, Ugh. um, and so he was different. He was just like, you know what? Fucking this and fucking that. He's like that mother who's got her, her teeth closed, but she's still fucking telling her kids to get off the <laughs> fucking couch. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so on board. And, and I do think who I am now, you know, it could have been a little different if I'd never had heard him, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of my mold um, was, was, is, is the way it is because I had the opportunity to kind of just hear an original character. Yeah. Well, and I, I love that you got the humor of it because I think that's extremely important to the band themselves. And people see Propaganda as a very serious band. And of course they are. They have very, very like tons of serious topics throughout all of their records. And I've traced them on this podcast for two and a half years at this point. But the humor that is like behind those guys in yeah. that band is so essential and like sub like subversively hilarious and the i feel like big d kind of like has a spirit like that as well like you mentioned the song lax earlier a hilarious song you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. i feel like that's something that that kind of is important to you as well well i i know what you mean like there and, and i am not the one to um describe someone else's humor you know sure. what I mean? but um their humor is like right right with ours as far as boston humor um but it's different it's like i can appreciate and wonder and wonder sometimes like where are they coming from with this yeah. uh, <laughs> but i do think it's it's got this general uh place setting near boston humor you know what i mean going like you know just razzing really deeply your friends you know what i mean like like look at this fucking guy kind of stuff you know you know like so i do think it was a film their their humor like just to reiterate re reiterate it, it's similar but different and i think that's yeah. why i liked it yeah i love it well one of the things you should do in your pop your propaganda rabbit hole that you're about to go down for the next yeah, yeah, couple yeah. Of weeks or so is that you should find 1990s live recordings especially from gilman um mm -hmm. where basically they just like yell at the crowd for yeah. like three or four minutes between every single song because it's the funniest stuff you will ever find on the internet the band yeah. finds it extremely cringeworthy because they're them, but like, I find it to be extraordinarily funny. And I know that you will love it. If you find the 95 live shows from Gilman, they're hilarious. Yeah, and somehow I know this, like, I just can't quite remember. Like, I don't think I ever saw them live. Like, but I know that their banter is like, you know, no effects has their banter, but propaganda yeah. is their banter. Right. Like, right. And they're, they don't, and they don't, and they don't do their banter anymore, really. Um, it's not like that these days. So if you go to a show, you're not going to see them oh, okay. behaving in the same way as they would 25 years ago. But it's very much worth going back and checking out. Sorry, Chris Hanna. I don't mean to uh, tell people to go and dig into everything, but it's too good. Um, okay, so yeah. tell me a little bit about... Uh, so you guys do this cover. Um, tell me a little bit about the decision to make the song uh how you landed on it any recording stories that stand out to you about big d and the kids tables rendition of ska sucks well the, the the record itself strictly covered we like to do like an ep in between full lengths so that you can kind of close the book on whatever you were inspired by and you know so the the next record doesn't sound too much like it mm -hmm. no fan might want them to um 
<laughs> so for this EP, we decided to just do covers. And yes, each cover is kind of like um, an essential part of what made Big D or what is part of the members. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, these are the songs we love. These are the songs that represent uh, like, a, you know, making a cake. Like these are the ingredients. You know, so strictly covered, it's like the ingredients that makes Big D in the kids' table. You know, and yeah. so so propaganda had to be on it, and um, in that song, because because of my attraction and you know to to the lyrics, to the humor, um, and then him just saying like, "fuck all these bands." And at the time, I was kind of like, "yeah, fuck all these bands." Do you know what I mean? Like, you're you're messing up the way I look at this genre. You know what I mean? Um, and so it was an you have to understand it, it was an absolute pleasure to do mm. you know? and it's like putting on your hero's clothes you're like look at me you know yeah. I mean? and it sounded awesome john graber the guy who recorded it um he did an outstanding job and um it was just it was just an honor and a pleasure to be inside that song yeah Okay, well, there's a detail that I want to really latch into here for a second. Uh, yeah. So yesterday it was announced that Terry Hall from the specials passed away. And Big D's cover yeah. of Propagandi Ska Sucks has a very faithful recreation of Message to You, Rudy, within the song, which yeah. I think that today is extraordinarily timely to discuss. Um, tell me about the decision to, you know, not do what Propagandi did and to do like the full specials recreation within the middle of the song. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was almost like it didn't even have to be said, if you know what mm. I mean? Like, when we were doing it. I think it was one of those things where you look, we all looked at each other and we're like, well, we're going to, we're going to go, we're going to play it longer. And we're going to play it, you know, like properly, if you will. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, so we also thought that was a funny, and I can't describe how addition to the humor because you know, we, we love the specials. You know what I mean? You can't, I mean, I still can't even put my finger fully down on where they're coming fully with that song. And you know what I mean? I'm not them, but like, so we thought it'd be funny to actually make that part sound proper and, and, and like it would, if it was, you know, the specials doing it. Yeah. And so we had it. And then, and it's a, it's, and it's a great excuse to play that song without covering that song. Like every ska band kind of wants to play that song. You know what I mean? But right. does the world need every ska band to cover it? No. So it was a good excuse to kind of, you know, take a little piece of the chocolate and eat it. You know what I mean? I love that. That's such a cool little moment. And, I, you know, I just really wanted to emphasize the fact that, you know, just this day after the announcement of Terry's passing, I mean, that being able to chat about that section of the song with you is actually really special for me right now. So I'm yeah. glad that we got to do that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So the song appears on Strictly Covered. Is yeah. that the first place that it appears? Because I know it appears elsewhere as well. I think it's on the Fat Records documentary film compilation. That's as right. well right right but i never got to see that or get a thing of it yeah so we, we did that for them and then it's sometimes with those projects you're like can i have a copy you know <laughs> gotcha. we didn't quite. so we yeah um but then we did change the lyrics at the end too which was an ad additional fun thing that's the next question i was going to ask tell me a little bit about the revised lyrics because i loved the I only listen to Propaganda's yeah. old stuff revision. So tell me a little bit about the revision process for the lyrics. Well, I just thought that because, because like the real home base of the song is it's, it's funny and I, and I run like it's, it's a hilarious song. You know what yeah. I mean? That I thought one should add a, a joke to the joke. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Like, <laughs> like, like that and literally doing that because that's what Propaganda would do kind of add yeah. it. It's like you're trying to pre be like, if they were me, they would do this, right? Um, and then every every band knows the the most like the thing you don't want to hear ever is I only listen to your old stuff. Like that's of <laughs> course of course like nobody wants to hear that. So that's the number <laughs> one thing I went for. Do you know what I mean? Because you know I play in a ska band. He says ska sucks. So you know so I'm like oh well, okay that's below the belt. Let me go below the belt with you. I only listen to your old stuff. Do you know what I mean? So it's, like, it's I think it's an equal like you know and then. And then, you know, it's really funny making fun of, 
Pro, uh, fat records bands for a, a second you know fat records bands go ding, ding, da, da, bop, bop. you know i mean <laughs> we all know that they go like that and so it's kind of funny to say it in a song that's doing that and fat mike has never fucking loved our liked our stuff i mean that's just the truth <laughs> that's just just true <laughs> you know like you play in this genre and you got the kings you know the kings of the scene you know the kings and queens of the scene and you're like you hope that they you hope that they give a shit a little and uh you know i mean big d's always been an outcast in the a genre of outcasts so that's an honor of course but so so that whole like ska sucks i only own propagandi's old stuff fat records bands go jing jing beat it bop bop and fat mike has never ever like fucking liked our stuff i mean that is that's just a good time that's just a good time of lyrics right there it's truly wonderful and you know, I, I love the fact that you kind of describe yourselves as almost like outcasts because I think the propaganda sees themselves very similarly in the same way. Like for, for a long time, Chris's Twitter bio was the North Korea of punk. So I think that they kind of uh, yeah. see themselves in a similar way. So I think in a way you you two are almost kindred spirits in that regard. Yeah, we should go on tour together. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you should talk to Sue Lin. Why yeah. not, you know? I mean, that would be, that would be so cool. You know what I mean? Like, again, I, I always go back to, it's just so cool that she's in my <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Um, so, you know, you've got a bunch of other really great stuff too. I listened to the record uh, this morning and the the Rancid cover of Old Friend, loved it. I love the Earthquake and Fire Hepcat cover. So there's some other fantastic stuff on this record that I think that that everybody would really like. So if anybody listening out there hasn't heard um, the Big D Strictly Covered record, I mean, it's it's wonderful. And I was listening to it today and I loved it. I, I, I cause you know, it's not our songs. I really like it too. And, and <laughs> can you say that? And yeah. uh, the brand new, uh, the Beastie Boys cover, it's just, just sounds really great. Like, like I'm saying, like, I'm just wearing these people's clothes, you know, like I, it, it's almost like being, you know, like the first time you put on like either your metal jacket or like your, punk jacket and you're like you're 14 or something and you're like at home and you're looking in the mirror and you're like yeah man i'm fucking i'm in you know what i mean it's kind of how i look at this record i listen to it and i'm like yeah man you know like doing these songs you know yeah the sam black search cover like it's awesome i know that feeling well like a re there, there's a, a live band here in buffalo that does karaoke live band karaoke after shows so i went and saw anti-flag here in buffalo last weekend and then there's the the live covers uh the live karaoke band afterwards features the first drummer from every time i die in the band so it's like a good oh, band gotcha. yeah, yeah 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 and i got up there and did mother by danzig and nice. and damn it by blink 182 and it's the kind of thing where the band is so good that the crowd gets into it so there's basically like a mosh pit for live karaoke and i just go as hard as i possibly can as if like this is my band yeah. and so i know that feeling of like wearing those clothes because like when you see everybody bouncing in unison to the chorus of a blink 182 song while you're on stage singing yeah. there's no way not to get into that you know what i mean <laughs> i totally agree I totally it's agree. amazing yeah i mean um, i just i was in canada recently and uh like an after the show show you know um happened and one of the guys from um Oh, I forget, but um, they were doing Operation Ivy songs of oh, Creep Show. I knew it just taking a second. Yeah, they were singing all the Operation Ivy songs. I posted up and just had a blast watching. I mean, you know, it wasn't Operation Ivy, but these guys are playing the whole record and you know, just drinking it up. You know, it's amazing. It. Yeah. What is uh? What's next for Big D and the Kids Table? Kind of what is your twenty twenty three sort of shaping up to look like? Well, we just the day before yesterday got off tour with the slackers and we've never been on tour with the slackers ever and that was so fun and just like little kids going to camp for the first time we totally made friends like with each other like we're total who who to thunk that we're totally in line with each other awesome um, yeah and i mean they're new york and boston I mean, we, we should know that you know what i mean um that people are generally kind of same humor and um so that was a pleasure and so now we're gonna you know do christmas and do new year's but big d's actually had a little trouble getting on the road as much as we want to after the lockdown mm. you know, it's you know like like a superhero just waiting for the red phone to ring you know what i mean we're like we can't like we've gone out we did a good run with mustard plug i mean we did we, we've done but we wanted a little more and so we're going to just keep trying to hack at getting back on the road. You know what I mean? Uh, it's because the touring industry, you know, 
definitely flipped its script after that lockdown. And so we hope to make 20, 2023 and 2024 more than 2021 and 2022. Wonderful. Well, David, I am I'm rooting for Big D forever and always. Um, and next time you all roll through Buffalo, I'll uh, you know, I'll I'll hang out and I'll chat and you yeah. know get to meet you in person, which will be great fun. Um, it's always awesome to meet a fellow propagandi fan. Um, so thank you so much for you know choosing this song to cover and yeah. to lean into it and to, you know, really go into the specials part of that song. I thought that was such a cool feature of this cover that kind of stands out from other versions I've heard. So that's yeah. really cool. But um, it's really awesome that you were willing to do this with me and hang out and chat about how fantastic propaganda is. It really means so much. That's uh, I appreciate it. And, you know, it's an honor to even be in the same sentence as them. Um, and, and before we even go, I know, I know we're kind of wrapping it up. Um, I, there's just one that one lyric I got. I know I'm, I know I'm reversing, but <laughs> you know, when he does the you know fuck Zionism, fuck this, fuck religion, fuck religion. I mean, you know, I mean, how old was I? Like 17 when I heard that. Right. And, I mean, that's one of those moments where you're like, I'm different now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and the fact that he laid into it and kept saying it over, like, I just didn't know you could do the things that they did until I heard them. I just, it wasn't even, it didn't exist. Oh, dude, that's not like, that's to me, that's not even the biggest example for me, like growing up in the American Midwest, uh, you know, having the lyric on how to clean everything where he says, fuck the troops to hell. I'm like, whoa like I, there are so many brave things yeah. that that absolutely blew my mind that i still to this day can't believe how many lessons i gained from this yeah. band about like what is possible to to have as a thinking human being you know what i mean i think he was the first person that i really understood or could smell or taste oh this is freedom of speech mm -hmm. you know what i mean like don't get me wrong you know like bands like body count and stuff will say crazy shit but they're just crazy sh you know good good, good yeah crazy, yeah like crazy shit um but he was saying something with a meaning and would make you think and yeah. that's what he did like you turn the song off but the song is with you almost always because you keep thinking about it like right where, where is he coming from what exactly does he mean he just did that you yeah. know what I mean? so yeah i mean out of all the you know, and I'm not, I'm not being um, silly, like the, the do that, do that, you know, like right. all that kind of those, I mean, they are just the best one. I know. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and like there's people I've heard fat Mike say that like when propaganda came along, they raised the bar on mm -hmm. everything from music all the way through lyrics. He's like, they were the ones for him specifically that raised that bar so much, which is, you know, such an important statement. One that I completely yeah. agree with. Um, and I'm glad to hear, I'm glad that you interjected and brought us back to that point because it would be a shame if you were on the podcast and didn't have a chance to say like kind of what the band meant to you oh, and yeah. kind of like what they did for you, like as an idea about how to live in the world and how to think as a person who, who was a, you know, committed to lifelong learning. Yeah. Drums, drums are obvious because we all love those drums, but gu guitar playing and vocals, um, huge, huge amount of influence in who I am now. Excellent. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Well, you know, David, thank yeah. you. It's uh, yeah. a thrill. Great fucking band. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. they're, they're the greatest. They're the greatest of all time to me, um, which is why I obsessively make a podcast about them. Um, <laughs> awesome. So, and now you're a part of, and now you're a part of the podcast journey as well. So I appreciate you being here and taking the time to do this for me. Absolutely. Don't believe me, you're
Yes, man. Yes, 